Hey guys, Mike Grinnell here with, hold on. Midnight Mod Garage. Tonight I'm actually going to be replacing my APR Carbonio air intake with the Luft Technique into with the Luft Luft Technique take I got from ECS Tuning. Um, hopefully this helps you guys out and you can see the difference as far as what you're getting specification wise on the air intake for the system and then I'll give you my own thoughts uh, after the install. And whether or not I felt it was any good. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be replacing the APR air intake, which is this piece, with the Luft Technique intake. First, I'm going to do the unboxing. So let's head over to the boxing here. $100 wine voucher. Sure. This is... rubber edging for the shield we're going to be installing. The air filter, it's six inch by five inch, four and a half inch. Got the turbo inlet silicone hose, which is Going from three inch to two and a half inch. Powder coated. This is a piece of the air intake box. It's got that cool little placard on it. Very nice. A couple more stickers. Very cool. Stickers are always good. These are uh, rubber mounting grommets to utilize the OEM grommets that hold the OEM and the Carbonio air intake pieces into place. Um, but it's nice because there's some replacements. Due to all the heat under the hood, a lot of the times these degenerate over time um, or degrade. They can get cracked, rip. So it's nice getting a new set of these plus new hardware. The new intake tube. So the filter is going to go on here. Okay, return airline. And this is going to go along the front to help direct all the airflow uh, to that air intake. So let's uh, let's get to the install. All right, so the tools you're going to need for this install, you're going to need a basic set of pliers. If you happen to have a hose clamp tool, then definitely use that. If not, I always use these lockers because it makes it a lot easier when you get in place. You don't have to worry about it snapping out on you. Then you've got some basic socket extensions. Um, if you're using smaller bitted socket, meaning quarter inch, then make sure you have an adapter. Um, then you've got your 7, your 8, your 10. Um, I don't believe any of these need to be deep socket, but if so, have deep socket ready. Uh, obviously a ratcheting wrench and then you have your H4 and H5 Allen bit keys. If you happen to have ratcheting Allen bit keys then those are good too um, but otherwise those are the only tools you'll need for this install. Let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually be uninstalling the APR intake. Not sure if you guys want to see this. If so then go ahead and skip ahead to the section identified in the upper corner of the video.
And the next thing we're going to be doing is removing this clamp right here, which holds the air intake on. Done. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually be removing the coolant line and we're gonna actually replace it with the ECS tuning one, which looks just like this. So first thing you wanna do is probably lay down a rag right here um, and have the reroute line ready because you may lose a little bit of coolant, lose a little bit of coolant from right here where you unplug that or right here on this one. You do just need a pair of pliers to squeeze and pull those. I'm gonna show you guys how I do that in a second, but just have all those ready so that you can just pull, replace the ECS tuning one, pull, replace the ECS tuning one, and then pull this and replace the other one. Definitely gives you access to this clamp right here, a lot easier. Yep. Yep. And as mentioned, you might get some coolant leakage. Tuck that right there, right there, and clean up a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys, because any other video that you guys watch of somebody doing an air intake install video, you're gonna notice that this is what their video will look like when they do exactly what I just did. You ready? All right, so now all you need to do is remove this one real quick and then put the other one back on and there won't be anything squirting from here. This is what it really looks like when you do it in the real world. Cut to Mike spraying engine coolant all over the place. Okay, so again, get the piece on there. I'm gonna remove this. Once you have them in place is when I would tighten them because you're gonna want it, you know, they have a factory crimps set up so you want to make sure that it's actually not kinked anywhere and that's the way it's supposed to be fit. Nice and tight. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to, want to take the heat shield after you've run, finished running that line and you're going to pop the first grommet in right here and that's actually going to go right onto the factory clip right here like so. All right, so after you pop that first grommet on, you're gonna reach underneath. You're gonna see there's actually a little hook right underneath there. 
There she is, and you're gonna pop the hose into that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the front part of the heat shield, which is this right here. Gonna flip fit it right on top. You'll see all the pieces on this part should be on top of the other pieces. All these screw holes, this one should line up here and this one should line up here. And then you have five bolts to install, which are included with the rest of the hardware, as you can see right here. And you also have washers to go with. All right, and then we're gonna tighten all those up. You can see that last one I did right over here. And these ones. So we're gonna tighten those up. All right, so now that we have the heat shield installed, we're gonna then take this five millimeter bolt right there, remove that and put the 10 millimeter bolt that came with the kit so that you can mount the aluminum air intake to the frame itself and hold it in place. So if your intake did not come with this tubing installed, uh, make sure you install that. You just push it into place. Mine came already pre-installed. Then you're gonna install the aluminum intake tube. So we're gonna go ahead and feed that through there. And then you're gonna wanna get your 10 millimeter. So again, another perfect example of a pro video showing you how easy it is to get that little bowl right there tightened um, with a simple 10 millimeter and a ratchet is a bunch of horse shit. Um, the easiest way to do it I found was if you have a 10 millimeter ratcheting socket set, you can actually access it from the front right here like so and it's actually a billion and a half times easier to, to do, which <laughs> I would recommend. The next thing you're gonna do is then you're going to get your reroute line, which you have from the OEM intake. You're gonna run it back through here. Yeah, which is impossible to do with one hand. You're gonna run it back through there and you're gonna plug it in right down here, you see a little nipple down there, that's where you're gonna hook it onto. All right, then you're gonna take the turbo inlet intake tube, you're gonna put the longer end onto the intake and the shorter end onto the turbo inlet. And you're just gonna push that till it bottoms out on this clip right here, and then tighten up this bracket. And then on this, just fit whatever you have left. You should have about an inch on there onto there, make sure there's no kinks in the hose, and then tighten up.
Make sure the clamp's on facing up. Slide that on. And then at this point, you're going to want to tighten up, finish tightening up your hose clamp there, your inlet hose clamp, tighten that up, and then tighten up the clamp right underneath where you mounted it to the engine block. And then the last thing is going to be the install of this. So you're going to start the routing here, run it up, and then all the way over. Alright Mike, so we saw you finish the install of the new air intake on the Golf R. You've been driving it for a few weeks now. Give us your thoughts. Alright, so the Luft Technique intake um, actually provided about 150 more CFMs of airflow um, and it produced about 24 degrees of cool air air intake temperatures and that's with about 85 degrees out. Uh, this is Florida so I believe the humidity was around 150%. 155% and uh, <clears throat> yeah, overall it was good. Sounds great. It's an open air intake system. Um, it does come with an excellent shield that goes all the way across the whole front of the grill. Um, so you are getting maximum airflow. Previously I had this carbon fiber APR air intake system. Um, it actually only has an intake through a small portion of the grill. Um, I don't know why they mounted the filter on sideways here because you're not taking advantage of the 360 degrees of the filter. Um, produce about twice as good as far as CFMs and IATs compared to the APR one. Though that one is made of carbon fiber, so it's guaranteed to add at least 15 more horsepower to your car. Um, but otherwise, yeah, so I think it's a great intake system, well worth the $200 that I paid for it, um, and about $300 cheaper than the APR one. So that's it. All right. Um, get in the garage, get dirty, and stay tuned. All right.